electric flux isn't the most important topic, but flux is going to be important when we uh, talk about magnetism and induction. So let's get into it a little bit. Here's our problem. Here's our situation and setup. Now, what is flux? Uh, you can think of flux as basically the amount of field that passes through a given area. So this um, charged metal space chunk you know, gives off a field and some of it passes through this arbitrary area. Now, um, we could say, hey, the area is going to be bigger. Uh, therefore, it's going to enclose, you know, um, you know, it's going to have more field lines passing through it. Therefore, the flux will be bigger. Or we could, you know, say, you know, if we wanted to increase the flux, we could increase the charge on this charged metal space chunk. And, you know, those uh, field lines would get closer together and you'd have more field going through the area and therefore more flux. And flux itself is uh, the sum of the field uh, lines times the uh, area. And for our problems, it'll just be a uniform field. So you just have like some value for field that's uniform, and you multiply it by the area. And this equation here in our slides on the left says that that flux is equal to the enclosed charge over a constant. So now imagine a sphere surrounding our metal space chunk. The area of that sphere would be A and the uh, magnitude of the field from the charged space chunk would be E. And we're assuming that's a constant field at every point. Uh, and according to this equation, the flux has a constant value uh, of Q over weird E. So that should be true at you know any any sphere we look at. You know, if we looked at a bigger sphere over here, uh, Q over E isn't any different. Um, and we might say, but hey, our area is a lot bigger, therefore our flux is going to be bigger. This equation can't be true. But uh, as we get farther from the space chunk, what happens to the intensity of the field? The field is um, from a point charge is, is this. Um, the distance gets greater, the field gets lower. So even though our area increases, our value of E, the field decreases, uh, and, and those changes offset each other, and, and Q over E is constant. But back to the problem at hand here. Uh, part one is to just find the flux, which is field times area, and we're told that the field two meters from the chunk is this value, 190,000 newtons per coulomb. And we multiply that by the area of this sphere. Um, remember the little equation for area, 4 pi r squared. And we get about 9.5 million for our flux. And to find the charge, we can set that flux equal to the enclosed charge over this constant. And here's this constant. It's the uh, permittivity of free space. And solving for Q, we get about 84.5 microcoulombs. Now let's proceed to uh, problem one. Now, uh, just to, you know, disclaimer, you could pretend that these concentric circles were just points in the center. Um, we could treat them as point charges in, in the center and we'd get equivalent results. Uh, using the good old kq over r squared equation. But let's use this one just for practice. I'm going to rearrange it to solve for the field and put in our numbers. And there you have it. Uh, note that we did uh, convert microcoulombs to coulombs. That's a negative 6. And we uh, converted 15 centimeters to meters. And that answer is 3.2 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb.